to uh, get us kicked off this morning with our first speaker, and that is Melissa Armo. She's new uh, to the Wealth 365 Summit, and um, I believe Rob is also here. He was going to say a few words, too, to get us started. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Marissa. Good morning. Good morning to everybody here as people are joining us uh, to kick off the next uh, day here. We're excited to have Melissa with us. Uh, she, you know, our team and her team have been uh, working together to get the schedules uh, tied up uh, so we could uh, find a great spot for her and and a, uh, you know, have her on the schedule at the same time. Uh, you know, one of those uh, power broker women on Wall Street. So it's great to have her with us. Uh, she, you've seen her featured on other things, as it mentions on the screen, like Fox News, Fox Business News, Cheddar TV, a lot of different places there. So uh, she's a resource, a trusted resource in the industry. And uh, we're looking forward to having her on and uh, getting your great thoughts about her on the back end of this. So Melissa, it's great that we could finally get the schedules to work with our show and your show, your your uh, talks and events that you have, and uh, really excited to see uh, uh, your presentation this morning. All right, Melissa. Did everybody see that? There you go. Yep, looks great. Thanks so much to both of you. That was such a lovely welcome. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? And you can see the chat, right, uh, Melissa? You, yes. you have the chat pulled up? Wonderful. Yes, great. Okay, lots of great prizes, lots of exciting things happening today. And, of course, today is the first day of earnings season, the official kickoff to the beginning of earnings season for the end of 2021. So today I'm going to be talking about trading, trading the markets, and I'm also going to talk about inflation, which is very topical right now. And again, I talk about this a lot on TV. Many people are concerned about the economy right now. We're talking about this literally on television every single day. And I'm sure you've noticed wherever you live in the world, I live in Manhattan, I'm sure you've noticed how prices have risen um, really for the most of 2021. We've been in this situation. So today we're going to talk about how to beat inflation, trading the market, and depending on the time slots here, I have about 50 some minutes to talk. Maybe we'll bring up some charts and see what's going on and my picks this morning. But I want to get through and get to the lecture here today. I can see the questions. I'm doing great, thank you. Um, and you can ask questions as we go along. I think everybody's seen me, or if you haven't seen me, this is me. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. And you can look for me on Fox News, News Nation, CBS. I try to tweet when my hits are gonna be. So if you follow me on Twitter, I'll always put that in the morning of when I'm gonna talk and what show I'm going to be on. So let's talk at the beginning right now about inflation. What really is inflation? Inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Inflation is typically a broad measure, such as the overall increase in prices or the increase in the cost of living in a country. We've seen this here in the United States. Now, I know some people may be overseas, but I think people are seeing this pretty much all across the board, all across the world right now uh, for many reasons. Part of it is COVID, part of it is the supply chains are all messed up since COVID and have not been put back into place. You see the backup in the ports. Why? Some of it is COVID uh, restrictions and some of it is a lot of people are still not back to work. So there is a lack of people to unload the ships at the ports. There's a lack of people to even make some of the products and services and things that we enjoy. I don't know if you notice when you even call if you call over the phone to get service from companies or even like just your phone company, if you have a question, you're put on hold forever, people are not back to work. Things are not back to normal yet in the world since COVID. So let's talk about the current state of things. We're in a situation right now, and again, we're starting earnings season today. JPM reported this morning, it was up slightly. I don't know where it is right now or where it's gonna open, but. It didn't really have bang out earnings in my opinion. We're in a situation right now where there's a possibility that interest rates could go up, which will affect people if you uh, you know, owe money on credit cards or if you're trying to buy a house or any kinds of line of credit. It also affects what happens, the, the debt that the government is, is paying. So we extended the debt ceiling, or Congress did, I should say, out to December, but we don't really know what's going to come of that or the tr the 3.5 trillion stimulus plan that the government is working on right now i'm not sure how the market will react to that it could react to that with worse selling which we've seen in the last two to three weeks 
We've had a very bullish market this year in 2021. It was easy to go long stuff. You went long crap, you made money this year in 2021. I do not think that lasts. Trading normally, the way that I look at it is you have to have a set strategy to trade. But there were people that didn't know what they were doing this year that made money in the first six months of the year because it was very easy to go long. But the current state of things is that you're gonna need to know what you're doing with your money. You're gonna have to make good choices because again, the cost of things is going up. We're in a period right now where yes, wages are rising, but they're not rising as fast as inflation is rising. Initially, Jay Powell, the Fed chairman said at the beginning of this year, and even in the summer, he said inflation was transitory. I knew that wasn't true. I knew that wasn't true as a, as a consumer, okay? And specifically as someone that, that lives in one of the most expensive cities in the world, in Manhattan. Inflation is not transitory. We're already in that period where it's not transitory. Because again, this has been going on all year. It's half, we're halfway through October. It's almost November. It's almost the holiday season. They're already, already telling people you better buy your gifts for Christmas now or you're not gonna be able to get them. Why? Because again, supply chains are messed up and gas prices are soaring. And I don't know how many of you follow the Farmer's Almanac. I'm from Pennsylvania. The Farmer's Almanac is big there. Everybody always reads it for the forecast for the winter. Well, supposedly, I just read an article this morning even in New York, supposedly we are gonna have a freezing, freezing winter in the Northeast. Now, again, depending on where you live, it may not affect you as much, but when you have colder weather outside, then gas prices, heating costs go up, okay, because you're running the heat more. So with gas prices higher, and then we're getting into the winter months, the colder months, and we're going to have a colder winter, well, that's a problem. Then, you're, then your gas bill is going to increase. And again, if you're driving, if, if you're someone that drives to work back and forth every single day, you're already seeing the cost of prices going up at the tank. This I clipped from my Amazon. I, I rarely, in fact, I can't tell you the last time I went into a supermarket since COVID, the last 19 months, I pr pretty much don't. I order everything in New York from Amazon and I can just get it delivered the same day or the next day. Every time I put items in my cart, I may not check out that moment. I go back, boom, increased, increased, increased. Just normal things that I buy, cream cheese, cheese, tomatoes, everything's going up. Housing has gone up, food has gone up, gas has gone up, just normal things. And again, like I was saying, I can't get some things I like. Like I go in, I have it in the cart, boom, out of stock, gone, sold out. They have two things left, three things left. If you're going to the shelves in the grocery stores and actually walking in, things are gone. Uh, and now they're telling people to stock up on all of these paper products again. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous how much how many things can we stock up on? I mean, it gets to the point where you need a whole, you need a whole other garage just to stock up or a refrigerator stock up and everything. It just doesn't make any sense anymore. We have to get back to normal, but supply chain issues are messed up right now. And really there's no end in sight for this. So the bottom line is that, you know, here we are, we're in this situation. How are we going to get out of it? I do love these cheese balls too. <laughs> and specifically for the, for the holidays, somebody wrote that. I, I clipped this as well from an article I read. Some 79% of U.S. consumers said they're concerned about rising prices on essential goods and services such as housing and food. According to a monthly survey of more than 1,000 U.S. adults conducted by Numerator, a market research firm, Americans paid 2.8% and 3% more for shelter and food consumed at home in August compared to August 2021. Okay, so you can see, but I got to be honest with you, when I see the cost of food going up just myself, you know, it's more than 3%. Some things have literally doubled, again, depending on, you know, what products you are buying. Baking is another one I've seen gone up a lot. Uh, so it, it really is affecting everyone across the board. Now, if you're someone that is extremely wealthy, you know, it doesn't affect you as much as someone that's living paycheck to paycheck. But guess what? Even people that are wealthy are noticing it and no one wants to spend more and have less coming in, okay? Everybody, and, and I've noticed this even particularly, if, if you're a high earner, they even notice it even more because they want to be at a certain level, okay? So don't think just because you're, you're living paycheck to paycheck that, it, that you're the only one that's concerned. Everybody's concerned about inflation. It's a problem across the board, so what can people do about it? Again, how can you beat it? I plot this in here. This is an inflation calculator. If you look back just in the last five years, if you bought something for $1,000 back in 2016, 
Now, five years later in 2021, that's a 14% increase. You would have, the it's, with cost of the dollar or the value of the dollar you see is going down. It basically comes to 1139. So you can see from year over year. And if you have money in a savings account, I mean, you're earning next to nothing. It's like 0.000001% or something ridiculous, okay? So what can we do? What can we do? What can we do to stop inflation? Well, we can't stop it. We can't stop it. We can't control the government. The only influence we have is when we go out and vote, okay? So we can't stop these things and the policy, uh, the policies that the decision makers are making, like the Fed, like the Secretary of the Treasury, you know, they're gonna make their own decisions about what's going on. This quantitative easing, all of these things are affecting the markets. You're seeing it, like I said, in the selling you've seen in the last few weeks. So how do you beat inflation? What can you do? Number one, spend less. I can, I can spend less money at the grocery store. You can spend less money at the grocery store. I don't drive, so it doesn't really affect me as far as gas. You can not drive on a vacation maybe, not go somewhere for the weekend. Personally, I don't like to spend less. That doesn't work for me. So, you know, that's a choice. I don't like that choice. So what else? Number two, you can ask for a raise at your job with your current employer. If you're full time, you work full time, you can ask for a raise. You might get it because right now employers do need people. They absolutely do need people. Uh, you know, employers are looking for people. Some people are giving signing bonuses. If you ask for a raise to stay at your job, you might get it. But it's not like years ago, you know. 20 years ago, I worked for the bank and I got a review every year, at an annual review at the bank. And depending on, you know, what they were allocated, I always got a raise, three to 4% every single year. And again, that was a long, long, long time ago. But that doesn't really happen anymore. You could be at your same job for five years doing a fantastic job and not even get a review or a normal raise, let alone a cost of living raise. And look, if we're in this period now of inflation. So cost of living doesn't even cut it, okay? But you might not get a raise, okay? That's, that's the one thing, you may not. So you can ask, but you may not get it. Three is you could get a second job to earn more money and work more hours per week on top of your full-time job. But hey, you know, a lot of us are working hard to begin with. I don't have children, many people do. You've got kids, you've got a spouse, you've got a lot going on, you're running around all during the week. Many people don't even have time to, to work a 40 hour job or more and then take on a second part-time job working, you know, 15, 20 hours more. That's it, then that's your whole week. All you're doing is working. You have no time off, no relaxation, nothing. So while that's an option, you know, and you could certainly do that. And some people have done that, okay? Have done that already in 2021 because there are jobs available. There's almost 11 million uh, jobs available in the US right now, which is nuts when you think about it, when unemployment is still very, very high. So that's another option three. Or four is what? You can earn money trading the stock market. You can earn money trading the stock market. And while you may not think, think of this as, as an immediate solution to your problems, problems or, or to, to beat inflation, inflation this second right now today at 9.13 in the morning, it is a solution that can be a short-term or long-term solution because I think we stay in this period of inflation. So, I mean, you can say, well, it's not going to last long. Well, it's already lasted this whole year. And then all of a sudden you get in, boom, it's January 2022, things could get worse. Prices could go up even more, okay? People think prices can't keep going up for gas and food. Yes, they can. They absolutely can. Same thing for housing. I think housing at some point is going to have a bubble. But I mean, they can keep going up, 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 up. And again, it depends where you live. I've seen rentals, at least here in New York, they're listed right now. Some of some properties are they're listing them for double, which I think is outrageous. Double what they were. Uh, a year ago, I'm watching those listings because I'm like, I really want to see if somebody's going to pay this because it's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. But the fact is you can earn money trading in the stock market. You can learn how to do it. While it may take you some time to do that, it's still worth it in the end because the amount of time that you trade, spend trading will be a lot less than you would spend at a second job. Okay, You don't have to trade for 20 hours a week. You could trade two days a week for an hour a day or half an hour a day. The whole point of this lecture today is that you've got to take charge of your own life. You've got to take charge of what's happening. You cannot change what's happening in the economy. No one can. And it's affecting everyone from every economic walk of life, okay? 
you don't want to be a slave to the current economic times and then get grouchy and miserable and woe is me and this kind of thing because a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are doing that. Don't go down that negative road. You have the power to change your situation. And like I said, you have options. The first one was spend less. That never works for me. I'm, I'm someone that likes to go and buy something. If I want to buy a dress, if I want to buy a pair of, pair of shoes, I buy it. Okay, that's just me. Now, again, I don't have a family. Maybe I think differently if I had a husband and kids. But the reality is, you know, even I have noticed, just like I showed you in my Amazon cart, how things are just going up from day to day. And I say, this is crazy. There's, there's, not, there's not no cheese balls in the United States. Somebody's making cheese balls. Why are they out of stock? Well, they're out of stock because the truck drivers aren't delivering them to New York City. Their trucks aren't coming in. And although this happened in March of 2020 when we had COVID, a lot of, a lot of trucks weren't coming in. I, I mean, that was insane. I could talk for an hour about what happened in New York City last year in COVID. It, at some point, I should just like write something about it. But I mean, it was mayhem, mayhem living here in that period. And now we're back in this again where I can't get things and, and you can't get things. I mean, I even talked to my mom in Pennsylvania. The shelves are bare in some of the stores. That's nuts. Okay. We have to take it upon ourselves and we have to get clear with what is our goals. Okay. With what is, what is, what is our goal? Someone's asking about the time they need to get educated. Well, my class is a two day class that you can learn in a weekend. Are you going to know every single thing by Monday morning? If you do the class on Saturday and Sunday? No, you're probably going to have a ton of questions, but I'm here to answer questions for people. I consider myself a mentor with people, but we'll talk about that more later. But after you take a class, they do say that you gain about 80% or retain about 80% of the information in the class. So you still will know a lot, a lot about, you know, trading before you're done. Um, what's not a part-time occupation? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what you were saying. You can learn part-time and then you can trade part-time. The class is on a weekend and you can trade in a half an hour, an hour a day. Um, Thomas, am I talking doom and gloom? <laughs> I didn't know that I was. <laughs> I didn't know that I was talking doom and gloom. I'm talking about self-empowerment, taking everything that you know and making clear decisions for yourself and setting goals for yourself and thinking positive for yourself and not letting the economic downturn affect you. That's what I'm talking about. So anyways, you've got to face the reality of what's going on for you to be successful. If you could speed up your time to achieve your goals, set your goals, and make money faster by learning how to trade or learning a new system, why not do it? Okay, so you have to be honest with yourself. What do you want to achieve and when? Trading is something you can do with a short time investment and time is money. So someone was asking about learning and how much time that it takes, okay? Bottom line is that my class is a two-day class, which is an entire weekend at 16 hours. So that's a chunk of time to do the class. But after that, as far as the time you spend trading, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can trade my system with only a half an hour a day. And, and really, I think the idea of trading six and a half hours a day from 9.30 to 4 when the stock market is open is just too long anyways. I think you get tired as the day goes on, even though theoretically if you had no job and you just wanted to trade full time and you were, you know, uh, had all the time in the world to do it, I wouldn't do it anyways. I personally don't. And again, I work for myself. I work from home. I could sit and trade for six and a half hours all day. I don't. Okay. I don't have my trading room open for that long. I don't think it's valuable to do that. I think people tend to give money back um, in the market the longer that they trade. But what if you're a newbie to the markets? You can, you can learn, okay? You can learn. And again, someone asked about how long it takes. It depends on you, okay? Everyone has a different learning curve. Everyone can learn. It doesn't have to take that long for you to learn. And getting back to what I was saying previously about the situation, the times that we're in right now and looking into 2022, this is, this is not about doom and gloom. It's about seeing where we are right now and setting yourself up with a plan of action so you can be better off in three months from now. So you will be better off in six months from now. So you will be better off in 12 months from now. It's called being prepared. 
So again, if you could have prepared for what happened in early 2020 before COVID, if you could have foreseen what happened with that, what would you have done? What steps would you have done? I'm sure that you would have done something, at least more than just stock up on toilet paper. The reality is that people ever say, I don't have time to do it or this, that, and the other thing. You got to make time. If you want to improve your life, you have to make time. And, and that really is, again, going back to what I'm trying to say is where the power lies within you to take it upon yourself to control your own life. While it's great to rely on an employer to see if you can get a raise you know, at your job, well, it's great to say, well, the government's going to help us with stimulus and this isn't going to last long. You know, at the end of the day, if you take charge of your own life and you make your own decisions, then you can be in a positive mindset and then you don't feel like everything is out of your control. Because when you feel like things are out of your control, it is a, it's a feeling of powerlessness. And that is not actually something that will help you become successful in life. So the only way, in my opinion, is to beat inflation is really to earn more. You've got to move your income ahead ahead of the inflation number, earn more year over year, not the same and not less, definitely not less, but the same doesn't even cut it. The same doesn't even cut it. Do you know what I'm saying? So the bottom line is that you've got to get it to the point that you're earning more, okay? So how can you make money in the stock market? Actively trading. So actively trading means what I call chunking it out. You go into the market, we take a trade, we get the move, we book it. We take it, book it, take it, book it. It's called chunking it out. Depending on your risk, which we're gonna go over some trades here, you could make $100 a day. You could make $200 a day. You could make $300 a day. The bottom line is that it's called pulling money out of the market. You're taking a bag home every single day. That bag could be small, that bag could be big, that bag could be medium. It's up to you, okay? So what do I do? I trade gaps. And I'm gonna teach you here now what a gap is. And I, and I see a bunch of questions here. I, I, I like to address everyone's questions about some of these political issues, but we wanna stay on the topic here of trading. So I'm gonna talk about gaps and explain to you what a gap is. But gaps really are a specialized strategy. This is what I do in the market. And if you wanna be successful, and success does not mean that you have to do this full time. It's the idea of being able to make money at all even if you're doing it part-time, it's the point and the idea that you want to be successful, even if you're only doing it for a half an hour a day. And professionals have specialized strategy systems and reasons for taking trades, which is very important. Now, let's explain here what is a gap. I'll explain it, and then I'm going to show you on a chart. A gap is a break in continuity. It's an interruption, a difference, a disparity. What is a gap? It's a break. It's a price break on a chart, okay? I clip this here from this morning. What is a gap? This is a chart of the QQQs. This is a daily chart. Uh, or no, this is a 15 minute I have in here of the pre-market of the Qs. So I'm going to show you last night and then this morning. So here, can everybody see my, my arrow here? This was yesterday during the day. Market fell. This is again the chart of the QQQs. This is an ETF. Fell into the close. Dropped. Fell in the after hours here. So the market was down. So the market was gapping down last night because this was the post market. Then this morning we were up. Okay. So this is 1013. This is today. We gapped up. So the market was down here in the post market around 355 and change and opened up roughly around 357 and change here this morning. So the market gapped up. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Okay. So we were up this morning. Again, I don't know where we are, we are at right now this second. Someone can write it in the room and tell me where the cues are right now. We were shelling off here, though, after the rally around into 7 o'clock. So this was yesterday's bar. This is a daily chart. This is yesterday's bar of the market where we closed. So we shelled off, and then we were right in here. Gapping up just slightly, see where my arrow is, a little tiny, tiny bit at the end of yesterday's red bar, okay? Now again, what is a gap? Oh, we're at 359.35, okay? So we are gonna open up. So we're gonna open somewhere in here, okay? This is yesterday's bar, but here's where we are. Just pretend like we're already 930. That's where we are, okay? So anyways, 
let's look at some other gaps. Go back. Remember I was talking to you about the fact that we've been selling off here in the market. So the market closed here. This was the 27th of September, gap down here on the 28th of September, rallied and fell. So if you shorted the market here in this day, guess what? You made money. If you went long, you lost. So again, what do I do? I'm looking for gaps. I'm just showing you some gaps here in this market. And I'm going to show you here one week of trades of gaps. This was the week of not last week, but the week before, because I did the webinar over the weekend. So I showed not last week, but the previous week. And again, someone was asking about how much time do you have to do that? All of these trades here we're going to go over is an entire week of results. It's an advanced trader risk. You can risk less, you could risk more. But the point is though that you can make money without having to trade all day because these trades were fast day trades in the morning and they were all based on gaps. So, so this, this was, was the week, week of starting, starting 927. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm showing you here. Oh, this was this this was this day. Here. This was this day that we did the gap down in the market. Market closed here, gap down, fell. You can see the tail. We shorted this. So we shorted it, got in, got out. Remember I said earlier about chunking it out. Again, the whole point of trading is what? Is to make money. And again, we're lecturing today about how to beat inflation, but really there really is no way to beat inflation. You've got to move your income ahead. So you've got to have more money coming in than you have going out. And if you have more money going out now than you did, say, 12 months ago because of inflation, then how are you going to get more money coming in? Okay. The only way to have more money coming in again is to either get a raise or another job or you can trade for income. So let's get back to this one here. This was a gap in the market. Stock, this was the market closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. Here was the trade. Now, the cues. You don't trade the market every single day. It just so happened this was a good gap. Again, this is a day trade. How do you do day trades? You do day trades on margin. For those of you that don't know what a margin account is, you can ask me and I can explain it to you, but you don't need full on cash to take a position like this. You can trade it on margin. You can also do it as an option, okay? So the entry was 369.80. This is an advanced trader risk of 1,800 shares. Risk was 2,700. Exit was 368.28. This is a one minute chart. So what did we do here? Closed here. Again, this is the QQQs. This is a one minute. I'll go back to the daily and show you. This was the day before close. Gap down, rallying, boom. We shorted it, got the drop, out, boom. Again, this trade was done in 15 minutes, less than that. So again, learning something will take an entire weekend to do the class and will take time while you really, really get to do it. But doing it is the best way to learn something and it's the best way to get used to doing it. Practice, practice, practice. But you can train while you learn. You can make money while you learn. That's the whole point. And the amount of time that you're allocating each particular day to trading does not have to be a lot. This trade again we did and we got out before 10 o'clock Eastern time. This was a short. Profit was $2,736. Again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you were willing to risk $500, say, for example, you could risk 500. Your goal is to try to make 500. You can risk a thousand. Your goal is to try to make a thousand. I'm trying to make one to one on all of the day trades that I take. Okay, ideally. But anyways, this was a nice quick trade. This was back on the 27th. Then we did Apple on the 28th. This trade failed. This was a loser. I'm going to go over it to you in a minute. This was the second day, Tuesday. Closed here, gap down, rallied. We just didn't have a good entry in this. We did it. Um, we did it late. It did end up falling. It did end up going red. This was a short two, but this trade lost. The entry was 143.30. 2,000 shares. I do use stops. I use hard stops or limit order stops. I'll show you what happened in a minute. Risk was 2,600. Exit was at the stop, 144.60. And there was this was a loser. There was no profit. So here's what happened with this one. This closed here. This gap down. Open. Boom. We got in it. We got taken out in this here, drove it up, flew over, and we got stopped. It did go on to work. I did not retake this. 
but I'm showing you here again, we were in and out in this trade, even though it lost in 15 minutes. Don Flynn is asking, can you risk a million to make a million? Well, Don, if you're asking that question, I'm not sure if you're, if you're being facetious or if you're asking this jokingly or serious. If you're taking a trade on margin, and for example, in this trade here, if you're taking 2,000 shares, if you wanted to risk $1 million cash on a four to one margin account, you're not gonna get filled a position size that would even equate to being able to risk a million. So I don't know if that's a joke or you're trying to be a smart ass or what, but I mean, when you're actively trading, you have to get filled in the position. 2,000 shares of something like Apple actually is a good size position. If you open up a chart, and I don't have this in here, we can look at this at the end and see the volume in each one of these bars, if you even attempted to short 100,000 shares in this bar, you're not gonna get filled at the same price, number one. You'd, you'd move the stock in taking a position like that, and that wouldn't even equate to that anyways, that price point. So, I mean, there's different ways to risk money. I do options as well. I would say if you want to risk more, you're better off doing something to positions and options or swing trading. So you're gonna run into a limitation with actively day trading where you're looking to take a trade at say 9.35 and get out at 9.40 to be nimble like that without moving the stock, which you wanna be a blip on something and not move it. You do not wanna take some enormous position. And again, I think 2000 shares of Apple is a big position, okay? So I don't know if that was a serious question, but I answered it seriously. We did another trade that same day. We did the cues. This trade worked. Let's take a look at it. This was a gap, okay? Stock close to your gap down, rallied, dropped, broke, boom. This was on the 28th. So the market fell on this day. I forget the reason why. Again, it doesn't matter. It was a nice gap. It was a short. So this was a big trade. What did we do with this one? We did an ad with this, which I'll talk about in a minute. And again, this is a big position. And if you cannot afford to do this on margin, you can do this as an option, or you could have. Entry was 365.60, shares 3,000. Again, your risk at every trade should be almost close to the same, okay? We did an ad. We added to it while it was dropping. I'll show you in the chart in a minute. And then this is, this is a huge position, to be honest with you. 6,000 shares. You've got to have the buying power to do it. You can trade at a prop account with 10 to 1 margin. You can trade at a retail account with 4 to 1 margin. Again, I can talk about that at the end if you want. Otherwise, you can buy one contract of an option in something like this. You could have bought a put. In the queues where we entered a 365.60, you could have bought a 365 put for that week expiration to do it. And it would have been a lot cheaper than having to t have margin on this or have a margin account. But the average price was 364.60, boom, got the drop. Huge, huge, huge profit, huge trade. Why? We got the move, we had a great entry, it sold off, we had the momentum on our side, and it was a $5 plus move. So let's take a look at it here. Again, this is a one minute, then I'll go back to the daily. This was on 9.28. So first we did the stop in Apple. So we got stopped in Apple. We were down. Then we got in this too, okay? So this one went, again, see the gap. Closed here, gap down, rallied. Here's the whole shebang. Oops, sorry. Here's the whole shebang of the whole day in this. So this trade actually, because I took the loss in Apple, I did the ad and held this longer. I wanted to make up the ground from the loss in Apple, plus I saw what the market was doing, I saw how the market was selling off, and the momentum was going with me in this respect. So again, let's go back to the daily, okay? This was this day, we got in this in the tail. So what really happened here was first this gap down, then it rallied, this was green on the day, then it broke. Down here's the volume, okay? but this was a short. So I like to trade the market, even though it's a little pricey, why? You can get in, you can get out, there's so much volume, it has big moves, it has tight spreads, and by the market, I, I'm referring to the QQQs or the SPY, but I do do options in the market as well, um, but again, you can be a lot more nimble in day trades. Then on, so then we had a good day, that was the 28th, even despite the Apple loss. Then on the 29th, we didn't do any trades. You could have gone golfing, gone to the pool, gone shopping, whatever you want to do, okay? No trades the following day. Again, it was a slow week, but sometimes this will happen. Then at 9.30, we did KSS. 
show what happened here. Again, what do I do? I look for gaps. Again, you chunk it out. You put a week together. I do not ever trade. I don't trade all day long till four o'clock. I don't trade, trade, trade a million trades. You're seeing here one thing a day, maybe two, okay? This closed here, this gap down, open, dropped. Here was the volume. This was the 30th. This was KSS. This actually was an earnings gap and it fell and we shorted it. Again, all of these trades in here today are shorts. Here's the one minute, entry 48.15, shares are 4,000, risk was 2,600, exit 47.39, boom. Again, a dollar close to a buck, whatever you can squeeze out of it in something at this price point, that's a good move. That's a good move, okay? Profit 3,040, again, you could have taken half this, you could have taken 2,000 shares, you could have made 1,500, here's the one minute. Close to your gap down, open rally, get the drop. Here's the volume right out of the gate. And again, I'm showing you here the gap. So what did we do? We, we shorted this. So a lot of people that trade gaps, and I'm gonna explain why I do gaps in a, in a minute here, but a lot of people that trade gaps actually think that gap fills work. Gap fills do not work. While sometimes you can trade a gap as a gap fill, gap fills do not consistently work as a way to make money in the market. Everything works sometimes. Even crap trades work sometimes. I just told you at the beginning, while we had a very bullish market, for the majority of 2021, now it's all of a sudden getting tricky for people, but guess what? People should never have been going long crap, and they did it all along the year and made money because everything was rallying, even stocks that were in downtrends. Sometimes anything works, even bad trades you can make money on. People made money on that GME going long, a stock that was just, just crashing, and now people are stuck in that down a lot of money, actually, because the stock is not rallying back and is not pushing back up. So even though sometimes gap fills work, they do not work consistently. So what you, what you have to find and what you have to focus on and what you have to do in the market, if you wanna trade, if you wanna make money, is you have to be consistent with using a system and a strategy that makes you money more than it loses. You have to have more winners than losers. And again, as far as sizing goes, you have to size what you can afford to risk, okay? You can't risk too much. Now, someone's here asking about a low budget. First of all, if you have a small account, you probably should stick to options because options and in options, you can trade options with a cash account, not a margin account. Again, you could pay for one contract and spend, you know, if a contract costs a dollar, you could pay for one contract, which would equate to 100 shares of the stock, you know, whatever it be. It could be the Q's or Apple or something. Sometimes you can get them for cheap prices like that and you'd be risking $100. So you have to size yourself according to your cash, and the type of account you have should be based on how much cash you have as well. You need a margin account to short. You need a margin account to actively trade. As far as margin requirements, it varies from stock to stock, but most of them at most brokers are just the normal margin requirements of whatever four to one is. Sometimes you'll have a weird one where you have a short requirement for a weird stock or whatever it happens to be, and you go to take it and the margin requirement is slightly higher, okay? Instead of four to one, it could be three to one or something, but that certainly isn't every stock and it's definitely not the market, okay? And you wouldn't know that probably until you would go to take the trade, to be honest with you, because that is not something that happens every single day and it's not something that happens every single week, okay? But in order to have a margin account at a retail broker, you need 25,000 minimum. You can open up an options account, cash account with $2,000 at a retail broker. If you want to trade at a proprietary day trading account, again, I'm not a broker. There's a ton of different places out there. You can check into them. You can open up a prop account with as little as $2,500 and have 10 to one margin. And that's plenty to day trade, but you can't risk $2,600 in the trade if you have 2,500 in the account. You can't risk half your account in, in a one trading position either way. You must size yourself accordingly, okay? Stocks that are, that are hard to borrow that you can't get at all, then you can't trade, but we don't do those. I mean, I can't even tell you the last time that I, I, I had something I couldn't do, to be honest with you. The ones you're talking about, if you can't get it to short, it's probably crap, doesn't have enough volume, too spready, whatever, something we wouldn't be doing or doesn't have enough uh, history in it. So, I mean, I can't even tell you the last time we did something that was hard to borrow. You got to trade at a good broker. You got to trade at a broker that has short accessibility. And we're trading stocks, you know. We're, KSS, you know. You know what Kohl's. You know Apple. 
You're buying products at all of these places. You may not know the QQQs if you're new, but the QQQs is an ETF for the market, okay? I do not trade futures. I have no interest in trading futures, to be honest with you. I have no interest in doing anything other than what I do. And I've made a whole career out of it. And to be honest with you, again, if I want to make more money, I just increase my size. So I risk more in options. That's how I'm making more. I'm putting more in a position in options. Why? Because some of them are expensive, like I'm trading the high flyers like Amazon and Tesla and things like that. And also that I can get the overnight moves. And again, it's a function of how many trades you want to take. So for the day trades, I'm in a comfortable position where I'm at with it. You could risk more. But you're going to have a cat where it doesn't make sense then to take a position as a day trade because then you'll you'll be classifying yourself really as someone that's almost like trading like a fund, like a small hedge fund, and then you're going to be noticed in the market. If I get in and out of something with 2,000, 3,000, even 5,000, even 10,000 shares in some of these stocks that I've traded in the past, so like CCL, things like that we traded that are really big volume, no one notices me, okay, because there's millions of shares in them. And then again here, 10-1, we didn't do any trades. So one loser for the week, three winners, average win ratio 75%, average risk was around 2,700. Again, you can risk less than that. So again, this is a normal week. 32,276 profits, it was a great week. It wasn't what I consider a busy week because there were two days we didn't trade, but this is an average week as far as your win ratio, which you could expect with me. So I'd say for every 10 trades you, you take with me, you figure 75% wins, 25% losses. So let's talk, I would see we're at our time here. How can you find these trades? I use a system, I've been talking about it. it. My system is based on gaps, but it's really based on looking at a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. So I'm predicting not where the gap is, is gonna happen in the first place. Like I didn't predict the market was gonna gap up this morning. I didn't know that. I will predict where it's going to go after I see the gap. We shorted Facebook yesterday. Facebook gap down. It was bad news. It gap down. We shorted it. I rated the gap. We did it on the day. I'm not predicting where something's going to gap. Like JPM, I didn't know yesterday what I was going to do in the earnings this morning. But after I see it, then I can predict it. So that allows you to take the trade. So I'm not trading the pre-market. I'm trading on the live day. Okay. But I am predicting where it's going to go based on the gap. Okay, does that make sense? So that's that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So let's talk about the strategy. Many stocks on any given day have no strategy to trade as a day trade. That's why on most days, stocks do not have a proper entry. You can't just trend trade stocks every single day. Like you can't just trade Apple every single day. You're not gonna have good results with that. Even though Apple's in an uptrend, there's many, many days that the stock is falling, okay? So bottom line is that you have to have something where you're looking at a specific system and a specific strategy to do something different every day. It's the foundation. It's the infrastructure, just like where you would build a house. You have to start from the ground up, from the foundation. Many people train and just take pot shops or different ideas from things or trade based on news without any foundation at all. You're not going to be successful if you don't have a foundation for what you're doing. Okay. You have to have the foundation supporting it just like a house, okay? JPM dropped. Okay, well that's good to know. I'm glad I didn't I'm glad I didn't go along that. That stock though, I will tell you, is one of the strongest banks in this sector. I don't know what the earnings said this morning, but I wasn't crazy about the gap up. I didn't do it. And I obviously I'm here with you and I didn't do any options in it either. I didn't do any calls, but I didn't do puts either because it did gap up. And it is one of the strongest, strongest, strongest stocks right now in the market. It just made new highs recently, okay? So anyways, let's talk about gaps. I don't, I, because I don't like futures, that's why. But that's just my, just like I don't trade Bitcoin. People say, why don't you trade Forex? Why don't you trade Bitcoin? You know, you have to like what you do. You know, I love stocks. You know, I love it. And, and now I'm talking about TV on it, you know, every single week. So I like it. But you can certainly use my gap strategy and trade futures by utilizing the gap system with the market, with the market ETFs. You could do that. You could predict the market directional bias, and I do, but I use it doing options and active day trades. But if you want to learn it and use it for futures, you can. But that's, you know, that's up to you. Anyways, gaps are a strategy or foundation for taking the trades. It's the reason that you're taking it. So again, let's go over the basics of what is a gap. 
A stock gap to the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. Simple. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Okay? So that is it. And that's what I'm looking for. And you only need one trade a day. Only one trade a day is all that you need. So let's talk about, again, I was saying about Facebook. Okay? This closed here. This gap down. Fell. Boom. This was yesterday. This is what we did. Now this was, I took this at 10 o'clock in the morning and I clipped this chart, but this actually bounced into the close, but we got in and out, in and out, we shorted it, okay? Here was the last time Facebook made a high. It was the beginning of September. It was a long, long, long time ago, okay? I haven't looked at when Facebook earnings are, but I think that they're the beginning of November, so that's coming up. But again, what's the whole philosophy of what I'm doing with gaps? Why am I trading gaps? Because they have big moves. Okay, they have big moves. I can prep in the morning before I even take the train. It's big moves and I'm looking for what? Large institutional money. Looking for buying or looking for selling, okay? Either way, I will go long too. Today I'm talking about shorts, which is a great time. Right now is a great time to be trading shorts and I'm an expert in shorting. I prefer to short. The reason I prefer to short is because it stocks move faster, lower than they ever do moving higher. So that is a personal preference, but I do go long as well, but I much, much on any given day prefer to short. But gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. Uh, Gary, you must have missed a slide a little bit ago. I showed you about 75% win ratio and a one-to-one -one risk to reward. Hope that answers your question on average. The professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction to play the gap, okay? And confirm that the large money will flow with it. Again, someone was asking about trading with a million shares or something crazy. That's, that's institutional trading, okay? That's like completely not an active retail trader. And again, there are many, many different retail traders out there doing different things. But I found that for the most part, we are not doing what most retail traders are doing because I'm trying to find out what the funds are doing. And then I'm going with them. Like today, for example, I did not go long JPM. I saw the gap up this morning. In my opinion, that stock was not getting bought with institutional money today. Someone just said in the room it's lower. I am not surprised. I didn't short it. I didn't short it for the reasons I listed earlier, but I didn't go long it because I couldn't get behind the gap thinking that big money was coming in and buying it. Okay, and if we have time at the end, I can bring that chart up. But that's a good example. It's a live example that's happening right now. So I'm looking for the confirmation, the confirmation that institutional money is on my side and then I take the trade and I play it. Gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency. Hurry. We got to get in. I try to get in quick. I try to get in fast in the first couple minutes of the day. And that's why I'm done early too. But gap trading is incredibly powerful because you get the big move, you get the momentum, and it's a profitable way to trade. And again, you can trade with small size and still make good risk to reward because of the fact that the moves are big. So I'm looking for the big footprints of institutional money. They step in, they create the gap, and then they take it and they follow it through. And that's what you want. And that's what you want to make money as a, as a normal person with a regular retail account, whether you consider it small, medium, or big. It's the idea where you are a blip in the stock and you're not moving it so that you can maneuver in and out of positions very quickly. Same thing even with options. We're doing all the options we're doing have tons and tons of volume too. We might be doing things that are spready because they might be expensive like Tesla or Amazon, but they still have tons and tons of volume. Okay. You can scan for options. Uh, you can scan for gaps pretty much on any platform. You can pay for a scanner if you want to. I did for a while. I felt like it was a waste of money on overlap. Um, yes, we do puts. Yes, we do puts too. But the trades I talked about today were, were day trades on margin. But I was saying that you could have like, for example, bought the one put in the market. And the market, the market options have so much volume. Okay. And again, we do the weaklings. Uh, so anyways, this is the spy just showing these, this here. I focus on one strategy. I think that's important. I will show you this one option. So we're talking about institutional money. Here's Adobe. This just tanked. Tank, 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 tank. I haven't looked at this for the last week, to be honest with you, but we got this. I got the majority of it. I mean, I didn't get the whole move, but I got a good chunk of it. Um, this just fell off a planet. But I will tell you that we were in this trade, and this trade was down before it went. And so here's what it did. 
The stock closed here, gap down, boom, here's the gap. Stock closed up here. This was way back at the middle of September, third week of September, gap down here. This was earnings. This reported late. This was the last quarter and this fell. I, I did puts in it. I'll show you that in a minute. Then it rallied, then it dropped. Look where it went. So this shows you the power of the gap. From the previous day before the gap even occurred, the very first one, it was almost, it was like 645-ish. This is just two weeks, people. This isn't even a month. In two weeks, the stock lost basically 100 points. That's a lot, even for a stock like Adobe. So I have an options newsletter. I called this trade on the 22nd. I called the 620 puts. Didn't expire to the following week. It worked. This was not cheap, though. One would have cost you $1,000. Here I have a beginner risk. Let's go over this one. Cost was 10. One contract, $1,000 sold at 40, 3,000 profit. A 300% return on investment. This can happen. This can happen. I'm very good at at predicting price action, but I didn't even get the last squeeze of that because we did this. We did this for the for the first expiration. Look what it did in the fourth. I like I didn't do this here. This was October fourth. Look where it went. I mean that was crazy. So again, it's the idea of selling, selling pressure. Okay, this that was a short buying a put is like shorting, which of course you could have done this as a mar on a margin too, but it's very expensive. An advanced trader risk of 8,000, sold at 40, profit 24,000. If you had uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars and you would have traded in the market, I would suggest focusing on options. It's just much, 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 much easier to maneuver in and out. And these stocks do have volume, so you can trade them with volume, but you don't wanna be in and out of something in five minutes with that type of size. You have to think about what you're doing you have to be able to get in and you have to be able to get out. And the whole concept is making money. If you short something and it drops a buck, you're going to make a dollar. It depends how much share size you have. If you have 5,000 shares and it drops a dollar, what are you going to make? $5,000, okay? And again, even to make $500 a day or $1,000 a day is good profit. When you think about the fact that many people that are day trading actively are losing, you have to consider the fact that if you're able to make money week over week over week, even though some trades will lose, I showed you the Apple trade, some trades will lose. You have to be able to make money by week over week over week. That is what your aim is. That's what your goal is, okay? It's the idea about results. Now, I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit here because I see we're running out of time. The whole purpose of what I do is looking for high probability. That is what I do. I'm calculating the risk. I'm saying this is going to go here and therefore has high odds. JPM, for example, today, I didn't do it. Why? It had low odds. Low odds it was going to rally. I didn't know if it was going to drop, but it was very low odds it was going to rally. Okay? So let's talk about part four. What's your plan of action? Be decisive. Be decisive what you want to do. Don't wait until it's too late. Put a plan of action in place. Okay? If, you know, you can't control the events, the world events around you, like I said, but you can control your own life and you can control the decisions that you make yourself with your own life and what you want to do. And the best thing you can do is be in awareness about everything that's going on around you. This has nothing to do with being depressed or being in doom and gloom. It has to do with saying, you know what? I want to better my life. I want to improve the situation. I know that this could continue. Therefore, I'm going to make the proper choices to improve my financial situation. And if you're willing to do that and invest the time and money in learning how to do something new, it can pay off. Again, will it pay off in two days or two weeks or two months? I don't know. I don't know you. But I know if you follow along with what I'm doing, it shouldn't take too long to pay off. So the reality is, if you want to make a time investment in doing something different with your life, knowing the situation that the world is in and the economy, then you can. So it's not like your hands are tied, okay? You've got to have more money coming in each and every week. Staying even is just not going to cut it. And you can learn as you go and earn money along as you go. Uh, here was the Facebook. I have this in here. And it was just to talk quickly about my class. Let me just keep going over here. I think I talked about this. My class is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. If you want to come for me, you will learn how to rate gaps using a checklist in the pre-market. And then you take the trade on the day. I teach you the entries. And it's all based on chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. Okay, it's the correct way to trade a gap. And I teach you the entry, I teach you the exits. You can use it for day trading, swing trading, or options if you want to do it. I have an options newsletter. You don't learn the system in that. That's 
that's a newsletter the trades are emailed to you if you're interested in that you can email me or go to the website but again invest in yourself and invest in your future you know i think it's vital i think it's important you know people go to school for learn how to become attorneys accountants all kinds of things it's no different with trading i know sometimes people tell me i've taken a class i didn't learn anything i didn't make any money or i'm still losing or whatever the case may be there are people out there that are successful trading. I am one of them. There are, there are many, many speakers at this event this week. It is not impossible. The odds are stacked against most people. Why? Because most people do things that do not make any sense. And most people are not disciplined in what they do. They're all over the place. One trade a day, two trades a day. That's it. That's all you need. When you get into this gambling mindset, of course you're going to lose. And unfortunately, a lot of people do that. You have to look at it as a serious venture, as a serious thing, almost like a job, except for the fact that you don't have to be at it for 20 hours a week. So you would learn my rating system in the class. It's a checklist. And the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And the next class is October 23rd and 24th. It's 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Again, I'm in New York, and that's the hours of the market as well, Eastern Standard Time. The cost of the class is $69.99. If you want to sign up, email me. I am running a special for this webinar, advertising it here. If you sign up by Friday the 22nd, you will receive the trading room free to the end of next year, which is 2022. That is a huge, huge amount of time. It's going to be good trading right now. One, the market's volatile. Two, earnings season started today. You would do the class then, not this weekend, but the following weekend, and then you could be in the room where I'm calling the trades live in the room. If you want to sign up, you cannot sign up on the website. You have to email me directly if you want to do it. If you want to trial for the room next week, email me. You can sit in the room for a trial. You can email me today. You can come in the room tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, again, we did not do JPM today, but fall is a good time to trade. Now, let me see if there's any questions. Um, if you can learn something that will make you money, it's absolutely worth it. In fact, the class is worth more than that. So you get what you pay for. It's like going into, into stores, you know, some of these stores that have these knockoff, uh, knockoff things. I think to myself, oh, my God. It's like I don't know if any of you have ever shopped at some of these, these things. Like sometimes you buy this stuff, it, it, it's done in one wash. People are making money with me. That's why I've had a business for the last 10 years. Let's quickly look at the market. I don't know if I have to take it on and off here. Do I have to take it on and off the thing? I, I'll just tell you what I think of the market here quick can everybody see the chart or not or do I have to unshare it can everybody see the market all right let's see Am I hey Melissa yeah no we we're just seeing your PowerPoint slide so you might have to share your screen yeah there we go all right just really quickly here i know i only have like one more minute so we'll take a look at here at the market we're falling today i'm not surprised about this at all just really really quickly i'm going to blow this up here's the daily so we were talking about some of these gaps in here that we shorted going back the last two weeks closed here gap down fell you see here what happened people bought this that was a bad decision. We shorted it, okay? Then we fell. This was from the Monday to the Tuesday. Fall off a cliff here. Look at this. Here, I'm gonna blow this up. Look at this. So this is what's been happening. Now, in my opinion, we'll see what happens, but I don't think the market makes a brand new all-time high, which is here, before the end of the year. And if it does, it'll be at the very, 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 very tail end of the year. So, I mean, we're getting down to the point here now where if we continue to drop all the way down into here, look at this, and we have a long way to go. While theoretically we could continue higher, what would have transpired and made that happen? Something like a move up in the banks, which we didn't see today, big, big financial earnings, which we didn't see. Oh, look at this. This is tanking. Eeks. Wow, this, this actually didn't gap up. Look, this reversed. Wow. Just really quickly here. I don't know. I got to go. This was up here. Then I got on the mic, whatever. This turned. This turned. I don't know. Maybe I would have shorted it. It's too late now. This ended up gapping down. It was up, though. It was up this morning in the pre-market. It flipped. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't look at that again because I was talking. This was a nice short. This ended up gapping down. After all, it flipped completely, did a reversal. Wow. So again, that will continue to pull down the SPY and continue to pull down the market. Anyways, thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.
Everybody at Wealth 365, thanks for having me.